Now, the Royal Navy has released images of the moment it captured a gang of pirates off the Somali coast. A Lynx helicopter fired warning shots across the bow of the boat, while Royal Marines and speedboats gave chase. All 13 pirates on board surrendered when the Marines caught up with them. It's the latest victory against Somali piracy in a week when NATO revealed that the number of successful pirate attacks has dropped 50% in a year. Armed guards on board commercial ships and an increase in the use of anti-piracy measures, like barbed wire, have helped reduce boardings. But as Somali journalist Jamal Osman reports, this success is leading the pirates to take ever greater risks. It's something outsiders hardly ever see. But this is how Somali pirates prepare. They plan, <laughs> test their guns, check their boats, then disappear into the vast sea. I spent nearly a month in Somalia making a film following their lives and their community. To the outside world, people like Dahir Lugay are despised outlaws, but he claims he is just a former fisherman now making a living in the only way he can. Fishing is now much harder because illegal fishing boats have been taking advantage of Somalia's lawlessness and emptying its waters. I would rather risk my life to hunt down those who have destroyed my livelihood than sit here. An oil tanker would be ideal. I'm prepared to either capture a ship or die. There's nothing else for me here. But it's getting tougher for the pirates. The number of attacks has stayed about the same for the past three years. But last year, they had less success. And there are signs that the pirates are becoming more desperate, attacking with more violence, as far away as the coast of India, where these pirates were captured in June. Ships are defending themselves better, with razor wire to prevent boarding, firing pepper spray, and building a safe area where all the crew can escape to if pirates get on board. They are also fighting back with armed guards on board. We can see from this map it's self-evident that the, the spread of attacks is widespread. And I think of greatest concern is obviously the, the fact that it's actually spreading further and further from the uh, Somalian coast, I mean, even as far as up to the territorial waters of, of India. They are becoming more, more novel and also on occasion more violent. And there's been examples of ships where the pirates have got on board the crew have retreated to a citadel and then there's been arson attacks. There's been a greater sense of desperation in actually trying to break into the citadel. So, you know, there is no doubt that as we move into this year, um, you know, clearly that piracy is, an, is a long way from being defeated. Anti-piracy operations like this, organized by the Italian Navy, are also helping cut the number of successful attacks the pirates get about $150 million a year, but it's costing billions to fight them. There must be somewhere between those $150 million and $7 billion, if you take the lower bound estimates, that will make everybody better off in terms of a negotiated solution. One of the first victims captured by Somali pirates back in 2007 was Captain Colin Darch. I had to change instantly from being a very aggressive and angry defender of the ship into being a docile hostage. You were held by Somali pirates for nearly two months. What was your impression? Nobody's born a pirate. It was just the failed economic and government system in the country which had uh, forced these people into acting in this way. Um, they explained at some length that they hadn't had a government for 17 years, no health system, no education system, no government agencies at all, and they were forced into looking after themselves, and they found this quite a lucrative, successful way of doing it. Captain Dutch was lucky. In recent months, pirates have been torturing and even killing hostages. I have been covering the piracy development in Somalia for the past three years and met dozens of pirates. Some are getting rich, but they then hire the less well-off to do the actual hijack. They are not risking themselves. And as long as they can find desperate young men willing to risk their lives to attack ships, piracy will continue. 
Well, that was Jamal Osman reporting.